Hi, welcome to my channel. My last video is about the new shipment of Chinese SKS to Canada. And in that video, I left off showing you several pictures of a single SKS. Today, I'm going to show you a real one from that shipment. Now, on September 12th, the importer announced we can confirm that every single one have matching cereals and they were made in the late 70s. If you recall, in my last video, I questioned uh, whether they were made in the late 90s. If they were, then they wouldn't be made in Factory 26 because the Factory 26 closed down making SKS in 1980. So uh, they basically retracted that statement about being made in the late 90s. They made also, they actually posted a couple of pictures and uh, they said each rifle are cleaned and packed in cardboard boxes and they were well preserved in storage facilities. Okay, and this is a picture of probably what they look like in China in wooden crates. And as you can see, they were heavily coated in cosmoline. Okay, here's another picture that uh, shows that it's all cleaned up. And probably at the same time when it's all cleaned up, they can actually pin the magazine. Because in Canada, the magazine has to be pinned to five. And as you can see, majority of them are medium to light in color. There may be one or two that's a dark in color. But all of them have the French Tickler top handguard. Okay. Also, another uh, major change they did uh, to their posting, uh, the importer, and they said they are surplus rifles. However, they were never issued for service. So, in other words, they're saying all of them are unissued. Now, I've been in involved in SKS for over 30 years. And I've never seen an unissued Chinese SKS. I have seen lots of Russian unissued SKS. I actually, I own a few, and, uh, but I've never seen one Chinese. And so today, I'm going to talk about that, whether this one from that shipment is unissued or not. Okay. So, um, and also, uh, if you recall, the dealer also announced or posted saying that they were all in mint condition. We'll also talk about that. So I'll be back. I'm back. Now before I continue, let's uh, dispense with the uh, specs. Uh, the overall is 40 inches, the LOP is 12 and a half inches, the weight is eight and a half pounds, and the trigger pull is anywhere from three and a half to four pounds. So let's done with that. Now in the past, I had a Chinese early production SKS. However, it was refurbed. So I'll, I'll rely on that compared to this to tell you whether this is in fact unissued. Okay, it, ha it was a serial number in the nine million, but it was an early nine million. So it was just made before they switched over to the mid production. It had a long bayonet, uh, not a long barrel lug, and it also had a spike bayonet. So with this, why don't we start from the front and work our way to the back? And the first thing you'd notice is the muzzle is really shiny and bright. That's an indication that uh, it hasn't been fired much. Okay. Now, as you know, all Chinese uh, barrel bore are chrome lined. Okay. Uh, with the Russians, not all of them are chrome. The early, uh, early production was not chrome. The later mid and late production of the Russian was chrome. Okay, so that's that's an indication. Bright, shiny muzzle. Next thing I'll notice is the the uh, bluing, and the bluing seems consistent throughout, and it's actually quite nice. And then I notice um, with the bayonet lug. Now the screw is staked. There's three punches here, and I can see they're not disturbed. Okay, very likely 
if it was issued, the the uh, the bayonet would have been removed and the stake stakes would be disturbed. And they're not they're not likely gonna you know sand that down to get rid of those punches and then repunch them. So more likely they would just screw them back on. And if that's the case, uh, you can see a misalignment or you can see new punches. Uh, so therefore, or new stakes. So that's another indication that uh, uh, the bayonet screw has not been disturbed. Okay, moving down to the bayonet, it's the typical spike. There's nothing new uh, about that. So let's move down a little further. Now coming to the, the gas tube. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a line in, fr in front of the the French tickler and the tube itself, there's a line because this is a two-piece, signifying that it's a mid-production. And this is what a Russian one-piece looks like. As you can see, there's no line. This is all made in one piece. Okay, now the, the uh, top handguard, love this French tickler uh, top handguard. Uh, prior to this shipment, there wasn't many in Canada. Obviously, there was quite a few in the States, but uh, over the years, I, I have only seen one of these in a, um, in a gun show. But other than that, and uh, like I said, some people call it bake light, and some people call it fiberglass. And I'm looking at it very carefully. I can see how fine the fiber is, so I would say it's not fiberglass, it's more like uh, uh, resin on some sort of fabric, maybe silk. So that's what I would say. We can take a closer look when I disassemble and look, see what the underneath looks like. Okay, now we can start moving on and talking about uh, the, the wood, the uh, lower handguard, um, the stake, uh, the, um, the bayonet, uh, the spike bayonet has a slimmer um, uh, lower handguard. It's not a uh, pot belly like the Russian. So, and I can also feel the finishing is actually quite rough. Uh, they, what they probably did is just put one coating and the fiber stood up and, and of course it solidified. And that's where I can actually feel uh, this is very rough. Uh, the Russians would have actually sanded the fiber down again and put another maybe a couple of more coats. And looks like to me uh, the Chinese just did one coat because I can feel it's rough throughout. Now moving to the sight block. This is the first time I have a uh, leaf that has the Roman numeral 3 on it. Uh, before I would have had a, a Cyrillic uh, a Russian Cyrillic, Chinese did use a Russian Cyrillic letter, and I also had a, a D and a 3 before. But this is the first time I've seen a Roman numeral 3. And uh, this one has a groove in the center. Now I had uh, rifle, Chinese rifles that uh, didn't have any groove in the center. So, um, and if you notice, the it has a short barrel lug right there. It's about three quarter inch long. Moving along to the magazine. Now for uh, my American viewers, ignore that uh, it looks like a rivet, but um, and I later on I'll show you uh, that's that's required in Canada to pin the mag to five to limit the uh, amount of rounds that we put in this 10 round magazine to five. Okay. Now moving on to the carrier, as you can see, uh, this is in fact uh, mid-production. There's no lightning cut on the carrier. And um, everything else, and the finishing is not uh, uh, like I had gray finish before, uh, but I also had Russian, which is quite shiny and this is uh, somewhere in between. This is look more like a stainless steel kind of finish, uh, a brush finish, and that's your uh, uh, charging uh, groove right there. 
Now moving along to the mag catch. Okay, just pull it back. And this is the trigger. And you can tell this is a stamp trigger simply because you can see this is a sheet metal. Okay, and they have since spot welded this trigger guard to the trigger housing. And this is actually done not too badly. They did sand this down and I, in fact, I can still see two of the spot wells. Now, I had rifles before that they didn't even bother sanding it down and there's like three deep spot wells. So, uh, this serial number matches the magazine and the carrier and the stock. So that's all good. This stock, this wood stock, a little bit unusual than the other um, Chinese stock is that it has this little cutout for the uh, takedown lever. Okay, so it'll be a lot easier, uh, whereas before you would have a hard time reaching because of the, uh, or you could have this this catch on the upside, but then that would end up catching on to a lot of your uh, clothing. So they, they put it down and they just basically cut a groove for your finger to get to the catch. Okay, in the back. Now, I don't know what's caused this, but this is quite common in Russian, where there is like, like, a lighter color in between two darker colors when it comes to uh, bluing. Uh, this is not so obvious, but the Russian ones are, are very obvious that you see dark, lighter, dark. And this one you can see kinda, kind of a there is there, and I don't know what caused that. Now behind the uh, top cover, there's of course the serial number. Okay, now I'm just gonna switch it over to the other side, and the other side shows factory 26 and a triangle. Triangle means uh, it was built for the PLA, the um, People's Liberation Army. And these three letters, um, Chinese letters, uh, I was told by a, a viewer who said it doesn't actually translate to 56 carbine, but, uh, and that's probably true, but um, uh, you have to remember the carbine, the wording for the carbine actually came from Russia. Uh, and, you know, during the Second World War, the length of this rifle would be carbine, you know, because all the other rifles are a lot longer. And uh, it suits it. when it's. But then, a few years later, the AK showed up, and then it's shorter. So they, the, the Chinese end up, you know, calling it a rifle instead. So... As you can see, it is in the 23 million, so this was made in 1979. There, on this wood, uh, it still feels pretty rough over here, and you can see there's a stamp with a 4 on it. And as you know, in Factory 26, uh, in 1966, they moved the swivel from the side to the bottom, okay. And the butt plate <clears throat> trap door, there's a cleaning kit in there. I'm not going to bother taking it out. The wood in this one in particular is uh, not bad. There is nothing, uh, there's nothing really seriously wrong with that. Now if you remember, <clears throat> a dealer said they were all mint. When I bought this, I was able to examine uh, other rifles that was there, and also by now there's lots of posting of pictures and uh, uh, of the uh, shipment. And uh, are they all mint? Uh, I would not say they're all mint. Um, what I've seen is uh, some rusty, uh, some rust on them, and definitely there was a lot of um, repairs done to the the wood stock. And what I mean by that, even though it's unissued, the Chinese, uh, frugal as they are, or pragmatic as they are, would, uh, instead of uh, like what the Russians would do, if they see a flaw in the stock, they would ship that stock 
to the uh, laminated department and for them to slice it and make a laminate out of it. But the Chinese, they didn't see the need to do that. So what they did is they routed uh, the spot that was flawed um, uh, about, about one to one and an eighth inch long and about a quarter inch in uh, height and it was oval shaped. They just routed that out and then they of course uh, put a matching piece into that to cover that up and that's it. Now it's kind of funny that uh, not only have I seen it in person but there was a dealer that did an unboxing and if you look at the unboxing of the SKS, the Chinese SKS, you can clearly see that that stock has been repaired. And um, so therefore, uh, I'm kind of wondering if that's quite common. And would, uh, would, you, would a person still classify that as mint? Uh, I, I wouldn't. I would not buy it. So therefore, uh, in my last video, I recommended uh, uh, buying these in person. Unless you got a, a, a really a good deal, then that's fine. And if you're, you're fine with having a, a stock that has been repaired, then that's okay for, for you too. If you, if, that's, if you don't mind, that, that's okay. Uh, but me, I'm a little bit more fussy. And uh, so therefore, I saw them. I saw some of them uh, was rusted. I saw a few of them that was uh, uh, a couple of them, or was uh, or uh, that had repairs to the stock. I, I personally wouldn't, wouldn't touch it unless I, I got a really good good price. Um, so let me disassemble this, field strip this, and then I'll talk some more in detail of the internal. I have field stripped the SKS and uh, let's start off with the stock because it's the biggest item. I need to get that off my table and uh, as I said before there is no repair to this one and there is a triangle uh, stamp with uh, four on it uh, and of course there's a five digit uh, last five digit serial number on the stock and uh, uh, there's some I don't know how this green paint uh, dripped into this thing but there there are some green paint there and there's a, a number eight stamped on the inside right there okay uh, I don't know what that means nor do I know what uh, the four means right here uh, but Chinese are at this point uh, are not big in you know putting a lot of uh, factory stamp uh, on their uh, thing as you can tell. Okay, let's get rid of that stock. <clears throat> uh, let's talk about the uh, recoil spring. Now just because the uh, importer said it's been cleaned, uh, so does that mean you don't have to clean? No, because uh, inside this tube uh, obviously they just cleaned uh, the outside and inside this tube there was a fair amount of cosmoline. Okay. So yes, you have to disassemble this and clean the inside. Okay, uh, the top hand guard, uh, the top cover, uh, there was not a whole lot to, to be cleaned. That was well cleaned. Uh, and even surprisingly, the uh, trigger housing didn't have to clean much. Uh, and you can tell this is stamp because uh, the side here is pushed in. See this piece right here? Okay. When it's milled, it would not be, it would be straight across. And this is what I mean by that, is you can see this sheet metal uh, of the uh, trigger guard coming up, and then there was three spot wells. And they did bother to uh, sand it down, but I can still see two of the three spot wells. Okay. And now you're looking for a lot of wear on the hammer to indicate that it's not, it's been used a lot, it's been fired a lot, and I don't actually see it. I see a few that I have uh, did myself when I was uh, checking the trigger weight. So there's a non, not a lot of wear on the hammer, okay? So that's what you'd be looking for also. Um, I can also tell that, you know, Places here are pretty rough. It's not flat. Uh, over here is flat, but over here it's not. So as you can tell, they're starting to uh, 
uh, in the mid-production make, make parts faster. Okay, now moving on to the carrier. Okay, there was, there was some staining. Uh, that's probably due to the long journey. And there was some staining there and some staining there. It was actually quite a lot, but uh, I used a, uh, a brass uh, on a, a drill and I cleaned it off and it did come off quite nicely. But you can actually see uh, where, the, where the receiver was. You can see there's a line. It, was, it had surface rust. So luckily uh, it didn't, have, uh, didn't stay on the ship very long, but uh, you can tell I have cleaned it up with a uh, uh, wire wheel. So yeah, it came off very nicely. Okay. Now coming to the the bolt. Um, yes, there was actually cosmoline in the firing pin uh, channel. So yes, you have to take this apart, clean it, and just the oil the outside. Do not put oil inside the firing pin channel. You can put uh, in the extractor, but you have to take it all apart. Okay, and you can tell. And then after you do that. It should rattle like this, okay. And uh, there was a little bit of surface rust here, and of course uh, the wire brush. Actually, I used a hand wire uh, wire brush too for that part, and it came out quite nicely. Another indicator of whether this is unissued or not: look at the bolt face. Okay, you can tell this one has none. Okay. Another part is the back where it locks up right here and there is also slight and that's probably due to uh, me uh, racking it and pulling the uh, trigger trying to find out the weight. Now I did, uh, I did about, uh, about 10 times so that kind of looks like about 10. So. So those are the two indicator, and the uh, edges should be uh, nice and sharp, but not cutting. It's it's very good. So if there's no nicks on them. Those are the good indicators. Okay, magazine. Um, actually, there's not a whole lot to say do about the magazine. I didn't do a whole lot. I just want to show you what it looks like for us Canadians. Uh, that is the restrictor. Restrict the follower from going down and putting more than five rounds. So they have to do this carefully. If this was originally full of cosmoline, they would actually have to remove it all uh, before they can uh, safely put correctly put that pin in. They have to drill a hole and then once they insert the pin, you can tell it was hammered in and that's basically going to hold quite nicely okay so and then also to tell whether it's um, has a lot of wear is by looking at the follower because your, your bullet will be rise, riding on this follower quite a bit and I don't see a lot of wear uh, I might see uh, maybe maybe a test firing of a few rounds but that's about it. I don't see a lot. So you'll be also be looking out for that. Okay, now coming to the top handguard. This is what the inside looks like. And like I said before, I don't think it's baked light. I don't even think it's fiberglass. But you can actually see it's a very fine fabric. So it might just be resin on some sort of fabric, uh, maybe silk, don't know for sure. Okay, now one thing you must do is clean. There was a lot of cosmoline in this gas tube, especially this part right here. So yes, you do have to clean that. And there is um, last five digit uh, etched on the bottom of the uh, gas tube. And obviously you can't see it's on the bottom. So, okay, that's your cleaning uh, rod. And this is your piston. 
as you can see the head of the piston is very shiny so yeah it hasn't been used and there's no carbon build up on the, the front part so yeah that uh, also indicated it hasn't been used much okay now coming to the receiver um, there's one thing I always look for because a refurb sometime they have to file the side down uh, to punch new serial numbers like they would actually file the top half of the receiver uh, on a belt belt sander and then they would punch in new serial number and new new uh, factory codes and all that stuff but this one is smooth so no I don't uh, see any refurb done to uh, the metal okay and of course this is mid-production it doesn't even compare to the um, early production and of course the early production is very similar to the late production of the Russian so I'm not going to even make a comparison of the mid-production to the Russian because they're not even going to be close so here it is I'm going to show you what the barrel short barrel lugs looks like yeah it's about 5 inch to 3 quarter of an inch long whereas uh, the long barrel lug would come all the way to back here uh, the milling seems okay not too bad not the best I've seen but uh, it's it's okay um, the barrel was uh, clean pretty good there was very little cosmoline in there and um, but there was still a lot of cosmoline in the gas port okay so you have to put something in there to clean the gas port uh, actually this whole gas block had a lot of cosmoline so they didn't uh, uh, clean that part and uh, as I mentioned there's not a whole lot to say about the bayonet and so generally um, so what's my conclusion regarding this rifle is it unissued um, my opinion undoubtedly it is unissued now whether whether a stock that's been repaired is considered unissued yes technically it is unissued because it was never issued to the soldiers but uh, it, would that be classified as mint in my opinion no that that's a flaw so that would be not classified as mint and definitely if there's any rust and I can see there was some rust on the carrier the bolt and um, and if it were to be on a ship any longer then I think <laughs> it would have been nearly impossible for me to remove it so so that's basically it so thank you very much for joining me and I'm really happy to uh, show you what a unissued Chinese SKS really looks like so um, thank you very much for joining me and please subscribe